vertigo, the most common type of dizziness, the feeling of spinning or the world spinning around you. Are you a sufferer? Have you had it? I haven't personally had the pleasure myself, but over my career, I've treated several hundred cases of vertigo, and you may know that it can range from mildly annoying sensation to an absolutely life-changing, life-destroying affliction that can include nausea, vomiting, and absolute inability to function whatsoever. So in this video, I'll discuss by far the most common cause in my experience, vertigo arising from upper neck dysfunction. I'll talk about how I go about treating it, and I'll also discuss a published study from the medical literature that will demonstrate just how incredibly far apart their treatment protocols are from mine. A vastly different experience. We're up here in Lincoln, New Hampshire by the beautiful Pemigewasset River. I look at these amazing rocks from glacial runs of 17 to 20,000 years ago. I get to thinking it's, it's really all about balance, isn't it? Balance in the universe, balance in systems, balance in, for instance, the blood sugar handling capacity in the body, insulin versus glucagon. We have anti and pro inflammatory hormone producers, etc. So, really, it's a matter of trying to find homeostasis in our bodies and in our lives. I can't help but connect the topic of vertigo to balance, vertigo of cervicogenic origin. In other words, vertigo arising out of dysfunctional mechanics in the neck. Remember that the brain sends signals down the spinal cord and out, but there's about 10 times as much going back up. That's known as the sensory nervous system, sending information from receptors everywhere in the body. Eyes, ears, nose, throat, muscles, glands, tendons, organs, joints. The sensory part of that nervous system's job is to feed information to the brain regarding what's happening to the body, where it is positioned in space, and so forth. Simply put, normal physiological motion in the spine sends information that is accurate and timely to the brain. Brain understands what's going on in the body, what's going on in the world around it, and makes decisions, snap judgments 24 hours a day, everything's great. There are many possible causes, but ultimately dysfunctional joint mechanics in the upper neck will always cause altered feedback information to the brain. And as we said, a large number of receptors in the upper neck connect directly to the vestibular system which controls balance. The vertebral column is a stacking of vertebra or bones that make up the spine, 24 in total. The bottom skull bone, known as the occiput, sits on the top cervical bone called the atlas or cervical one. It's not uncommon to find certain alterations of motion in these segments such that the receptors sending back information are not being stimulated accurately. In the case of mechanical dysfunction in the neck, we always have aberrant information returning to the brain. The sensory feedback pathways are altered. These are always at play in cervicogenic causes of vertigo. The net result is a big imbalance in information to the brain. So we can think of vertigo really as difference between actual space and time information and what the brain is perceiving. Picture this, my eyes are trained on a tree over there, but the information I'm receiving from my upper neck receptors says actually we're pointed in that direction. You can see a major disconnect neurologically. That is setting the stage for disequilibrium, dizziness, vertigo, sometimes to such a large extent that persons can't even function. My goal as a doctor of chiropractic is to determine the dysfunctional mechanics, especially in that upper neck in the cases of vertigo. Mother Nature designed us to heal through natural means, not by drugs. Sunlight, fresh air, exercise, great food, super sleep, and the body has an amazing capacity to heal itself. To me, this is just an amazing example of homeostasis 
in the natural world. Let's go off now and let me talk to you about that medical study. Okay, so I want to share a quick study now published in connection with the International Anesthesia Research Society. I'll link it in the description. I invite you to go check out the whole thing. Briefly, this anesthesiology group temporarily relieved the symptoms of a 44-year-old male who presented suffering from chronic dizziness, uh, vertigo, spinning, nausea, vomiting, etc. Terrible situation. They employed a technique known as radio frequency ablation. Radio frequency signals um, essentially ablate or burn the nerve fibers carrying information from one direction to another. In this case, from upper cervical, upper neck, joints and muscles carrying information to the brain regarding position of the joints in space. So why don't we just now look at a patient treatment timeline which should be a great visual for you. Okay, so in my experience as a practicing doctor of chiropractic with specialty in applied kinesiology, I've literally treated hundreds of cases of vertigo. Again, as mentioned, the vast majority of those are arising out of upper neck, upper cervical bone uh, dysfunctional mechanics. The treatment for that is extremely successful if done correctly. By improving spinal mechanics, the feedback information to the brain is optimized, the brain knows what to do, and the disequilibrium between what my eyes see and what my brain perceives is eliminated. This poor fellow here has probably gone through an awful lot of unnecessary diagnostics, pain, treatment, and on top of that he's getting four months of relief with each ablation. I want to do one more quick timeline for you now. Dr. J's treatment timeline on an average cervicogenic vertigo case. Visit number one, number two, number three. So I'm exaggerating only very slightly perhaps, but it's not uncommon at all to find relief within one visit of correction of altered spinal mechanics, especially at the upper neck, with regard to symptoms of cervicogenic vertigo. In other words, when we return those bones to normal motion, and at times add some kinds of modalities on top of that, during visit number one, usually we'll have some percentage of relief. 10%, 50%, 99%. It's common that we'll see a, a patient one or two times more and by that time, I'm expecting total relief. Now, sometimes cases go five, six, ten visits. Sometimes persistence uh, lasts over a few months with uh, varying degrees of success between visits. But for the most part, good chiropractic care will very quickly return a uh, system to normal. So with that, I hope you consider chiropractic in your quest for reducing and eliminating your dizziness and vertigo. It's a terrible affliction. I've seen it many times and I know how bad it can be. Please leave me any questions below if you like. Contact me via email. Until we see you again, yours in vibrant health, Dr. J.